Recording in progress. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this again. Welcome back to our uh, recorded uh, discussion. Um, still continuing about analytical techniques, instrumentation, and automation. Yeah, I know it's long because it's really long um, when it comes to your bishop. So although hopefully I was able to somehow summarize it in a way that you already know um, in which part to actually focus, uh, focus um, especially um, when it comes to analytical technique, instrumentation, and automation, we're actually going to cover three chapters. So we're actually halfway through um, the discussion. So hopefully, um, I will um, also able to help you understand the topics easier and better. Okay, so for this particular part, uh, we're actually done with spectrophotometer, um, EAS, fluorometer, chemiluminescence, and electrophoresis. Now we're going to discuss um, your turbidimetry, your nephilometry, osmometry, electrochemistry, and then I think I would be doing a separate video for chromatography. And for the very last video, we'll be discussing about mass spectrophotometry and general principles with automation. Although no problem with automation because um, we've already started um, automation in your laboratory. So I was already able to discuss some of the um, key points or the driving forces that led to um, automation in the clinical laboratory. So with that, um, let's get started with our discussion so that uh, we'll be able to finish up with these topics um, as soon as we can. So we're going to talk about turbidimetry and nephilometry. Um, please do remember, okay, so before I move forward, remember that when it comes to turbidimetry and nephi uh, nephilometry, um, I hope you still remember when we uh, talk about your photometric, uh, photometric spectroscopy. So there is a type of photometric spectroscopy that uses or that only measures the light. And there's also the other one, your spectrophotometry, okay? We have your photometry and we also have your spectrophotometry. So in your spectrophotometry, we dealt with um, light spectrum, different wavelengths and measuring a particular analyte. When it comes to turbidimetry and nephilometry, we're again going to measure your light. Okay, We're again going to measure your light. But this time, we're measuring the light intensity or the light transmitted, but without um, considering your um, specific wavelength anymore. Okay, so we're going to talk about turbidimetry and nephilometry, a very similar um, concept in clinical chemistry, but uh, uh, they are differently, they are different from one another. And even though they are similar, there are key points for their differences. And I hope to highlight that um, in this discussion so that you'll be able to understand them immediately. Okay, so let's get started. So first and foremost, um, always remember that uh, both your nephilometry and turbidimetry are used to measure concentrations of larger particles. So large particles, what do we mean by that? These are actually for antigen and antibody complexes. So when we say antigen antibody complexes, this is actually a bit more for immunology, although it's a good start because next semester we'll be having your immunology and serology around midterms uh, specific for this specific topic. So um, hopefully you'll be able to still remember it by that time. So again, nephilometry and turbidimetry, we're measuring um, somehow larger particles. So we're measuring your antigen antibody complexes and generally your proteins, such as your prealbumin or your transtyretin and also um, several or other serum proteins. So as you can see, when we're talking about spectrophotometer, we are using that in the measurement of some of your analytes like glucose, pro your, um, your glucose, your enzymes, some of your lipids. Um, and then for AES, we're measuring your, your um, elements. Your, we're measuring a single atoms. When it comes to AES, similarly with your fluorometry and chemiluminescence. Now, when it comes to nephilometry, um, this is generally for larger particles. So I hope you get to compare okay, the sizes of those molecules. So in here, when we talk about uh, when we talk about your nephilometry and turbidimetry, 
Okay, when we talk about your uh, nephelometry and turbidimetry, again, we're talking about measuring the concentration of large particles that because of their, their size cannot be measured through absorption spectroscopy. So meaning to say we... Um, um, your nephelometry and turbidimetry are for substances that cannot be measured um, through absorption spectroscopy. More specifically, what I want to highlight is that we cannot measure their absorbance. Okay, We cannot measure their absorbance. So that's what we mean by this statement. So because of that, okay. so if we are not measuring it through absorbance, how do we measure the concentration of these substances in the solution. So specifically for nephilometry, okay, for nephilometry, we measure the light, okay, we, we detect or we measure the light that is scattered at various angles. So the scattered light um, yield a small signal um, and will be amplified in the measurement. So in the amplifi amplification part that is now your photodetector, specifically your photomultiplier tube. So remember that in your nephilometry, the keyword here are the keyword, the keywords here is the light scatter. Remember that in, in your nephilometry, we're not just measuring the light um, in a linear um, in a linear manner, but we're measuring it in several angles or in various angles. So remember that when your light um, hit a particular molecule, take for example an antigen antibody complex, instead of absorbing the light, it would scatter the light. Okay, so it would scatter the light in various angles. So the more, um, so in in concept by principle, the more um, antigen antibody complexes it complexes are present in your solution, the more that the light will scatter, okay? The more that the light will be scattered and the more light scattered there is, the more that you can measure the light and then that is nephilometry. In contrast, when we talk about turbidimetry, we're just simply measuring the reduction of light. So uh, measures the reduction of light transmission due to particle formation, thus it detects a decrease in the large signal. So um, I would go again with my example last time. So if I have my flashlight, if I open my flashlight, the light being blocked there, um, the light being blocked or the reduction in the light is being measured in your turbidimetry. So simple, okay? Let me just show you um, a particular, uh, an, in, an illustration so you would be able to understand it better. Here, I want you to look at, um, when it comes to your nephilometer, we're measuring light scattered by your particle. So we're measuring it um, typically within 90 to 15 to 90 degrees in angle. So as you can see from the light source, I want everybody to look at the screen. So you can see on the light source, you have your lens. So um, typically this is this would act like your, your monochromator. Okay, that would just simply concentrate the light into your cuvette. Your cuvette containing now your samples Okay, containing now your sample. And as you can see, unlike the traditional one, okay, unlike the traditional one, if it is a linear, so if it is a linear, that would be um, for your turbidimetry. But I want you guys to focus on the detectors or the photodetector um, on the 90 degree angle and also on the 15 degree angle. So these two detectors, okay, detector, um, 90 degree light scatter nephilometry and you also have the detector um, a forward light scatter for your nephilometry as you can see we have multiple detector for your um, nephilometer so that's one difference between nephilometry and turbidimetry okay so it uses multiple detectors aside from that um what we again measure here are not the transmittance nor the absorbance, but rather we are measuring the light that is scattered. So as the light, um, as the light or um, meet, or as the light as the light meet your um, antigen antibody complex or your larger molecules like prealbumin and other protein, the the light will now bounce off or that the light will now scatter. And the light being scattered is the one measured by nephilometry, okay? Or not the one measured by nephilometer. So let me repeat myself with that again. The one that is being measured by your nephilometer or your nephilometry are your light scattered, 
Okay? Your light scatter. So as the light reaches a particular molecule or a particular complex, the light will scatter. And the light scattered at various angle, usually from 15 degrees to, to 90 degree angle, that is what we are measuring. In contrast to your turbidimetry, in turbidimetry, what do we measure? We measure the reduction of light transmission. Gaano ka dami or gaano ka konte yung ilaw na hinaharang or tinatakpan nung ating complex, no antigen antibody complex natin or nung iba nating mga proteins. So in that sense, okay, if you're going to look at your illustration again from the light source, okay, you have the lens, you have the cuvette, and then after the cuvette, you have now the detector, usually for spectrophotometer, parehas, and also your turbidimetry. Ganun na ganun din pagdating sa turbidimetry. Dimetry. Okay? So, ganun din sa pagdating sa turbidimetry. The orientation of the components are similar to your spectro. Linear lang talaga sila. So, again, light transmitted is in forward direct. The forward, um, light transmitted in the forward direction is the one being detected. So, we're not measuring the other light that are scattered um, um, in any angle. We're just simply measuring the one at 180 degrees. Okay? yung straight lang yung linear lang so in here the amount uh, the amount of light absorbed by the suspension of particle depends on your specimen concentration and also your particle size so unlike in spectrophotometry okay the amount of the absorption um the absorbance uh, rep is represented by your um concentrate is directly proportional to your concentration in here in turbidimetry not only in concent not only is your concentration um the one affecting your absorbance but also your particle side so mas malaki yung particle mas madami yung naaabsorb niya na light okay that's why um hindi ito um tulad ng spectrophotometer natin okay hindi to tulad ng spectrophotometer natin because again the um if you guys could remember beer's law the molar ab absorptivity is constant in turbidimetry hindi yon constant kaya hindi beer's law pagdating kay turbidimetry ha makikita nda po tayo pagdating diyan so again when we're talking about turbidimetry if this is the if this is the light source okay let me just open na nga lang my flashlight so if if this is the light source okay if this is the light source and this is your cuvette okay take for example this one's your cuvette so the light that is being blocked Okay, kung gaano kadami, okay, kung gaano kadami yung nag-pass through, okay, kung gaano kadami yung nag-pass through, yun yung minimeasure natin sa turbidimetry. Okay, yun yung minimeasure natin sa turbidimetry. So again, makikita nda tayo ha, turbidimetry, it measures the, the reduction of light. In your nephilometry, it measures the light scatter. Okay, the light that is scattered at various angles. So if I'm going to go back to that particular slide, I want you guys to remember this because this will already um, take you far when it comes to nephilometry and turbidimetry. So let's just try to um, differentiate them, them further. Again, when we're talking about nephilometry, we're measuring light scatter. Okay, we're again, nephilometry light scatter. In turbidimetry, we're measuring the reduction of light. Okay, second... Um, Second difference between the two, um, in nephilometry, um, your photodetector, specifically your photomultiplier tube, are situated in various angle within 15 degrees to 90 degrees angle. When it comes to your turbidimetry, it is in linear form. So you have your light source, your your, mono, your monochromator, your cuvette, and you already have your photodetector also in the form of your photomultiplier. So always remember that, okay? Um, similarity, your nephilometry and turbidimetry are usually being used um, when we're talking about larger molecules because when it comes to these larger molecules, um, not only is the concentration affecting the light being scattered or the light being reduced, but also the size of your particle. Okay, we're also now discuss. We're also now taking into consideration the size of your particle. Kasi mas malaki yung particle, mas madami yung inaabsorb niya, and that would contradict now the the molar absorptivity when it comes to Beer's law. That's why we cannot use your spectrophotometer. Okay, we cannot use your spectro photometer. Okay, so moving forward, ayan. So those are actually your um, nephilometry and your turbidimetry. 
So with that, okay, I hope you um I made myself clear when it comes to um turbidimetry and nephelometry. So if you have any questions or clarification, please feel free to um send me a message. So that is it for nephelometry and turbidimetry. I'll be cutting this video into segments so that you'll be able to um only go back to turbidimetry and nephelometry if you would want to. Uh, but I will also be discussing your osmo metry um, right after this so if you have any questions so please um, send me your messages or send me your message regarding your questions so that is nephilometry and turbidimetry thank you so much for listening